Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 11th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. WPA3 was just recently released as a standard and is supposed to show up in network devices pretty soon if it hasn't already shown up in some devices. Well, we do now have some attacks against WPA3, in particular the simultaneous authentication of equals handshake or SAE handshake, which is sort of one of the big new features of WPA3. The authors of this paper, Matthew van Hoef and Ail Rohn, did name these attacks Dragonblood, and that's after, well, Dragonfly, which is sort of the more colloquial name for simultaneous authentication of equals. But before you throw out your brand new WPA3 access point, in case you happened to be able to get one, well, all is not lost, and actually, these vulnerabilities are, in my opinion, not really that terribly severe. First of all, there is a denial of service vulnerability. SAE did try to actually prevent some of these denial of service issues, but the fundamental problem that they're sort of fighting against is that this initial handshake is quite CPU intense for the access point. So if you're flooding the access point uh, with authentication requests, well, uh, then the access point essentially runs out of CPU cycles and stops stops responding. Now, in order to avoid that an attacker is just sort of blindly throwing packets at the access point, there is first a cookie exchange, but as long as the attacker is completing that exchange and is just spoofing from a large set of MAC addresses, they're still able to overwhelm the access point with reasonably small resources. In this particular experiment, they used the Raspberry Pi, which ran, if I remember the number correctly, at the CPU load of about 16% at the time at which uh, the enterprise level access point was maxed out. And if you think about it, this is probably not a battle that access points are going to win by adding more CPU resources. But uh, then again, uh, this is just a denial of service attack. The most severe attack that they came across uh, was a timing attack that actually could reveal the password that is being used for the connection. Now, uh, this still required uh, quite a bit of CPU resources in order to then brute force the password. I think they estimate $125 in Amazon EC2 time. And in addition, it also does require a malware on the device itself in order to actually collect the timing information. It's sort of one of these classic side channel attacks it can uh, be fixed uh, by designing your algorithms better and eliminating some algorithms that are known to be weak for these side channel attacks. But then again, remember the denial of service attack. In part, the denial of service attack is a problem because the algorithms were designed to be not sort of easily bypassed via side channel attacks, which essentially meant that a lot of the sort of optimizations that you would usually apply were removed. So the algorithm runs the same amount of time, no matter what input it receives. And then of course with the denial of service attack there also comes a downgrade attack because of course for the foreseeable futures access points will support WPA3 and the weaker WPA2 just like when WPA came out we still had to support web for quite a while. Well, uh, then of course, uh, if I do launch a null of service attack against WPA3, I may be able to downgrade a connection to WPA2. So quick summary, I hope uh, this paper was released in time for many vendors to address what can be addressed uh, with these vulnerabilities in implementations. And uh, definitely this is uh, far from sort of a death blow to WPA3. WPA3 still promises to be quite a bit more secure than WPA2. And you assert in conjunction with the FBI and other government agencies has released some details about a 
Trojan that is attributed to North Korea. This particular Trojan is really sort of more part of the infrastructure here. It's a proxy that's used to relay connections from infected systems. The write-up uh, released uh, by US CERT does list a number of indicators of compromise that you can search for. I think probably the more promising one here is uh, the SL connection that it's setting up. The SL connection is not really sort of a full sort of TLS connection, but it does use a fixed SL certificate for neighbor.com. That's a North Korean search engine. So probably unlikely uh, for one of your users to connect to that site legitimately. However, you do have to look at the SL certificate. The connection is actually not established to neighbor.com, uh, but to one out of four hard-coded IP addresses that are embedded in the malware. Now, the report lists some of these IP addresses, but of course, that will be the first thing that they will probably change. And sticking here with the more politically motivated groups for another attack. And this one comes from Kaspersky and the group they're identifying as Gaza Cyber Gang Group 1. Now Kaspersky is identifying three different groups here within the Gaza Cyber Gang. Group one is the one that Kaspersky calls the least sophisticated for their use of pretty simple attack techniques and also a lot of open source tools. But well, uh, being simple doesn't necessarily mean that they are not effective. They're using the good old trick of sending emails with links to malicious content to various uh, political organizations within the Middle East. And now once a victim actually opens the attachment, uh, then an attack starts that will download additional malware. What was kind of new here in his latest attack, and that's why Kaspersky called it sneaky pastes, was the use of Pastebin. Pastebin, of course, has been quite popular among a lot of different attack groups. And while Pastebin is also a legitimate site, it's probably one of uh, those sites that uh, tends to stick out the most if it's sort of seen in a normal network. So not really all that terribly effective as a covert channel. Well, that is it for today. So thanks again for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.